cultic crooks in the churches. Cultic crooks in the church. So, Second Peter talks about false teachers and their destruction. Second Peter chapter two. If you read the whole chapter, verse one says they secretly introduce destructive heresies. So they are part of the church. That's why they have to be secretive. They are doing it very cunningly. Okay, secretly introduce destructive heresies. Second Peter two one. And then verse 3, in their greed, okay, these false pastors or false teachers, in their greed, why? They want to build a congregation quickly, fast. 500 members, you know, one of my friends used to say, 10 people if you have, you can, you can settle down in life, you know, talking frankly. 10 people who pay tithe enough. So this, where did this Balaam spirit come? That's what this 2 Timothy 2 talks about it. I mean, 2 Peter 2 talks about it. In their greed, they will exploit you with fabricated stories. And then verse 4 says, such people go to hell. Do you see the word hell in verse 4? 2 Peter 2, 4. But send them to hell, okay? They are take, going to hell and taking people to hell. So it's not a church. It's actually a cult church taking the whole congregation to hell, okay? And then verse 12 uh, of the same chapter, but blas these people blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are, so they talk about all hi-fi stuff which nobody can understand. Verse 14, they are a cursed brood. And verse 15 says, they follow the way of, way of Balaam, the son of Bezer, who loved the way of uh, wickedness, but he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey. So I am, I am one of the donkeys. One of my jobs is to, you know, bray. bray and then also speak to the Balaams. Donkey, what is a donkey's job? Speak to the Balaam. Say what you are doing is not biblical. So that's what I try to do, however imperfectly I can fight against the hypergrace moment, try to fight against this uh, immortality on earth moment. So immortality on earth also is very dangerous because they say, unless a generation comes which believes that we will never die, Jesus will never come again. So Jesus will never come again. So Maranatha is out of, out of the hit for a six. So no need to expect the imminent return of Jesus. So you can live in sin. So thief in the like a thief in the night, he will not come like a thief in the night because Jesus is not going to come. Because any time, point in time, people are not going to believe they will be mortal. At least I will, I mean, so they're saying unless a whole a group of generation of believers believes that uh, we'll be mortal, Jesus will never come. So they're basically saying Jesus will never ever come. So people can live in sin, people will not die. So all this is teaching, deceptive teaching that brings, that leads to sinful no, lifestyle. Okay, whatever they say. Now, but look at verse 18. By appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh. And here this verse also says, with eyes full of adultery. Verse 14, with eyes full of adultery. So basically they are, they are encouraging sensual sin by giving excuse to sin. Grace as an excuse for sin. No death, no second coming as an excuse for sin. And so with eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. Okay, so that is cultic crooks in the church. So if you go to such a church, stop going to that church and join a Bible-believing church. Because why do you want to go to hell along with your pastor? It is so foolish. 